Hi, earlier this week I went to the cinema and saw Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, the latest Marvel Cinematic Universe film and the third Ant-Man film. Uh, it follows on from the previous films with uh, Scott Lang having access to a suit that allows him to grow and shrink in size and even to venture into the subatomic universe of the quantum realm. In this film, following the events of Avengers Endgame, Lang is a folk hero and has published a book, uh, while his daughter, who has grown to adulthood during the blip, the five-year period when uh, uh, everyone or half the universe's population vanished, um, is now developing her own scientific ideas, including trying to com communicate and map the quantum realm. Um, unfortunately, this goes wrong, leading to Scott, Cassie, um, Scott's partner in crime-fighting Hope and Hope's parents, uh, played by Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer, all being transported down to the quantum realm, which they discover has been taken over by the fearsome Kang the Conqueror since uh, Pfeiffer's character was rescued in the previous film. So they've got to uh, combat uh, this new threat and also uh, advance the story for the next film in the series. Um, I saw this film nearly a week ago, and I enjoyed it in a superficial way at the time. I didn't think too much about it, and it dawned on me <laughs> that I hadn't actually recorded one of these reviews, because the film is so insubstantial, and it feels so <sighs> lacking in substance, in material. It's rather like the previous Captain America Civil War. It's very much a um, internecine film, a liminal film. It's transporting the, the viewer from one stage to the next. So we're introduced to this new character, Kang, played by Jonathan Majors, who's set up as being the big new threat in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I found him to be almost entirely unthreatening. Um, he's someone who uh, conquers timelines, and there are hundreds of thousands of him in different timelines all banding together. Uh, for villainy, but Majors is a strangely uncharismatic, uh, uncommunicative actor. He's actually very dull to watch and very unengaging. And the character of Kang, who's spoken of throughout the film as being such a threat, is ultimately defeated very easily. Um, so I found the film to be very disappointing and quite lacking in the elements that the previous Ant-Man films found worked so well, of making them much more, ironically, small scale, of making them like heist films or thriller films, very small, condensed, not giant world-ending threats. Um, the film is very heavily dependent on CGI. It's almost entirely set in the quantum realm with its bizarre um, creatures and landscapes and topography and technology, and it's an ongoing onslaught of frenzied design, but it's really hard to care because we have this fantasy world with no connection really to recognizable reality. Um, all these weird creatures that don't connect to anything that the audience can emotionally engage with. And the great terrible threat that we're presented with is not really threatening in any way and not really interesting and it's surprisingly poorly handled and poorly written. The result is one of the weakest uh, MCU films to date, certainly um, overall, and the last few have been noticeably slack. Um, I enjoyed uh, Love and Thunder and Multiverse of Madness last year, but Eternals was a a downright poor film. Um, Black Widow as an attempt to relaunch the, the film series after Endgame was a huge mistake. Um, the film series seems to have lost its way rather sharply, and there seems to be a desperate need for a course correction. I'm not sure that Quantumania is the course correction they thought it was going to be. Um, it's possibly necessary to tell the ongoing story of the saga, but it's far from essential in its own right, and genuinely quite disappointing.